Project Vanquish is the Royal Navy's bold gambit to jump its carrier air wing into the uncrewed age. The Ministry of Defense is asking industry for a jet turbine, high subsonic, fixed-wing short takeoff and landing autonomous collaborative platform capable of launching and recovering to a Queen Elizabeth-class carrier without catapults or arrestor wires. A positive step in the new first Sea Lord's pursuit of lethal mass. The target is a technical demonstration at sea by the end of 2026, showing an attritable Tier 2 aircraft with credible payload and endurance that can do intelligence surveillance, strike and even air-to-air -air refueling a vital complement to the manned F-35B. In short, a competition has been launched to build a drone for the carrier, and one you can afford to lose. Tier 1 means a one-shot system, like most of the drones used by the Russians, the Houthis, and the Iranians, Tier 2 is one that is quite capable of coming back from a mission but cheap enough that you don't cry if you lose one, like many American unmanned systems. Tier 3 is a high-end job that you can't afford to be losing very often. There is an inevitability about drones as the direction of travel when it comes to warfare of the future. Mostly seaborne drones have been hugely important in the Black Sea too, though that is partly due to Russian deficiencies in defending against them. In the world of long-range strike and air superiority, drones seem so far to have brought relatively little to the party other than some ability to soak up missiles much more expensive than they are Ukraine has done some amazing things, but mostly against poorly defended targets. This may be because there haven't been a lot of higher-end, jet-powered drones built and when they are they are designed as Tier 1 disposable strike weapons aka cruise missiles. Vanquish could change this. It will have real utility too. As missile speeds and ranges increase, and submarines and their torpedoes improve, anything that can provide airborne surveillance beyond the reach of the limited crossnest helicopter system is a good thing. Something that provides airborne intelligence for the 98% of the time spent not fighting is also useful. Whatever one's views on unmanned technology, the UK armed forces desperately need mass now after years of pursuing exquisite equipment like the F-35 that arrives late, is overpriced and more vulnerable to treasury salami slicing than any enemy. The Royal Navy's carriers are designed for 36 combat jets, HMS Prince of Wales is currently deployed with around half that, and we have never done much better. When there's no deployment on, it's typical for there to be no F-35s at all available for operations aboard ship. It is clear that the F-35 cannot be the solution to making our carriers fully capable. We now need the government to create the environment in which Vanquish can happen fast, probably by helping our smaller companies thrive. This requires a cultural shift, particularly around our tolerance for risk. As well as being a useful weapon and sensor, Vanquish could be part of this shift. It will have real utility too. As missile speeds and ranges increase, and submarines and their torpedoes improve, anything that can provide airborne surveillance beyond the reach of the limited crossnest helicopter system is a good thing. Something that provides airborne intelligence for the 98% of the time spent not fighting is also useful. The few F-35s we do have at sea are crippled by the lack of air-to-air -air refueling, too. Vanquish, and whatever it spawns in due course, could do all these tasks. It could be ready to contribute to complex strike operations long before the F-35B will be, sadly. The US Navy and others are not standing still. The US has its carrier-borne MQ-25 jet, the top guns, not keen to be put out of a job, have managed to limit it to being just a tanker for now but it has good stealth and would be a useful contributor to strike, electronic warfare and intel reconnaissance if it was allowed to be. Experience shows that if there is a dangerous mission to be carried out, the uncrewed option is always the first choice in real life, no matter how Maverick and Rooster may feel about that. This is fertile ground for UK industry. Big companies such as BAE Systems, Rolls-Royce, Kinetic, Thales UK, Leonardo, MBDA all have options as do a raft of SMEs such as Eralis and Modini. Andural and other international tech firms offer autonomy and sensors. A real chance to stitch together sovereign capability and exportable kit British jobs, British supply chains and steady industrial work. This is the language of government just now here is a new and shiny opportunity to actually make it so.
The Royal Air Force may look at Vanquish and say that the short takeoff requirement, necessary for operations from the carriers as they now stand, imposes unacceptable limitations on capability much the same argument can be made against the F-35B. Anyway, the Royal Air Force may not be that keen to have any Vanquish systems itself. But it should want to be in this tent much of the autonomy, signatures and man-on-man -man teaming expertise already sits with the airmen. The cynical take is that this will become yet another inter-service turf fight, two sets of drones, two procurement lines and the treasury winning as the services pull each other's hair. Vanquish must be a genuinely hybrid program, with Royal Air Force and Royal Navy locked in from the outset, or it will fall victim to departmental sclerosis. Our track record here is not good, but noises coming from Whitehall on this project so far are. I am behind the sofa looking at this through partially splayed fingers, but let's see. As for the F-35C question, it opens many more cans of worms. Catapults which could launch F-35Cs could also launch other carrier jets manned and unmanned, with huge implications across the Royal Navy, the Royal Air Force and British industry. We can probably rest assured, there will not be full-fat catapults on British carriers for a long time. That fix was in long ago. We might well get less powerful catapults and traps, intended for drones only, under Project Arc Royal. Back in the real world of things that would be allowed to happen, Project Vanquish is exactly the sort of pragmatic, mass-making program the Royal Navy and Defense needs. Think of it as the Type 31 of air systems, not the ultimate, pristine fighter, but something you can buy in numbers, iterate and scale. The aim should be simple get a working demonstrator at sea, learn fast, buy lots, and British industry benefits. And this isn't me suddenly going all gooey for drones. As with all uncrewed systems, they need to be part of a holistic and well-funded spread of capabilities from disposable to exquisite. Years of underfunding has baked in an either slash or mentality when it comes to our vision for equipment procurement. This now needs to end. We have two years to show we mean business. If the Royal Navy and its partners do this properly, Vanquish could change carrier operations. The risk is political and cultural, not technical, will we let it be a bridge to a genuinely hybrid air wing, or will it be another nice demo that dies in procurement purgatory? All of this needs funding and it will be interesting to see what the defense investment plan says about it when that is published later this year. But for now this is a positive step in the first Sea Lord's pursuit of lethal mass.